Establishing the underlying structure of the head and its gesture vis-à-vis -vis the arabesque and the initial facial landmarks gives us an armature, as it were, upon which to render a convincingly realist and expressive portrait. The first thing we want to do is assess the primary plumb line for our head. Now I'm just holding up my knitting needle and letting it drop straight down and from the top part of the hair down through the head I notice it aligns with the corner of the chin down here. Also in line is this crook on the eyebrow right at the superciliary arch. So as promised I'm going to strike my arabesque at normal drawing speed. This is the upper part of the hair and this is the corner of the chin. Okay, so I want to start at the top of the head. Now before going any further I want to make sure everything's going to be lined up here. I'm just going to indicate that corner of the chin. And work my way up the side of the face. I could either go up around here and back but I think but instead, I'm going to go up the jowl here. See, here's my best guess of where the condyle is. This is all we're doing right now, is just taking this best guess. Get a little tuft of hair up here. Okay, just get this collar of the, of the jacket here. Here we have the digrastic muscles here. Okay, this comes from here. It's about there. Not too far on the shoulder, just a little bit. And there's my arabesque. Now I'm just going to quickly set it. Okay, I'm going to take the width. Okay, I'm going to go from here to here. How does that relate with the length? And it comes just a little bit below the hair here. But I don't have that in yet, so I'm going to, have to add this to my arabesque. So back up here to this upper part, see here, and then it comes down at an angle here. And you know, your gut instinct at this point of your training will actually be pretty accurate if you, if you follow the procedure that I've been giving you. And it's at this point that if you find if you second guess yourself, that's when we'll start getting some problems. Okay? So that should be here. So here's my hairline. This will be my check mark here. In other words, for my check mark, to my chin, if the arabesque is correct, back of the head to the forehead. Okay, let's uh, assess that. Okay, and hallelujah, no worries there. Now, because we're doing spectacles here or glasses, we want to incorporate them almost immediately here. 
I'm just looking at the shape of them here to here and then the angles somewhere to here and this is all I want for now okay we, we have more work coming in I, I know that's more roundish but that's my initial strike now let's get the brow line we know from our primary plum between here and here that this super this crease on the superciliary arch aligns with that. And that's my best guess. Again, I just go into soft eye. Okay, I'm just going to lightly indicate that shape. And before going any further, I'm going to cite and check it. So from mental tubercle to that superciliary arch, plumb straight up, doesn't quite make the top of the head. It comes to here. Okay, let's just put a little pin prick there. Make that a little stronger so you can see it. That's my checkpoint. Just going to cite again to be absolutely sure. Hmm. Cite as many times as you need to. You know, I think this checkpoint should come down just a little bit more to here. So it's, it's a fine distance. So now let's just check that. From that checkpoint to the superciliary arch, and this should come from here to the mental tubercle. And I'm pretty darn close. Maybe a sixty-fourth of an inch off. But that, I think that'll pass muster for now. Now, I want to feel, to get the other shape of brow in here, I'm going to feel my way across the pyramidal nausea of the nose to here. Too, it's too small to measure. So we want to develop a tactile feeling of measuring. Or, or better expressed, a tactile sensibility for placing elements of the drawing. Now, let's get the base of the nose here, the base of the alar. You know, we don't see any, we don't see the nostrils here because our subject is leaning forward here. There's my best guess right there. Okay, and Just going to take a first stab there at, at, at these angles, the shape of the bottom of the nose there. Then I want to check it. I'm going to cite at an angle here. I'm going to go from the center of the chin to the middle of the base of the nose, the base of the LR. Go straight up. And well, how about that? It actually, from here to here, this is the angle that I took. From here to here, then going straight up, takes me to, I don't know what we call this on, on glasses here, but let's just, call, let's just call it the nose bridge. So just like a checkpoint, I want to go from here and with a tactile sensibility, I want to place it here, yeah, feel. That seems pretty plausible. Let's just see how this relates. I'm 
Okay. No, no big crisis there. Just going to take a very, very light line there, just so I can remember what that was for. Now, an important element here is in this facial angle. I took the angle off here. Now, if we go between into the center of the pyramidal nasi here, okay, here's our facial angle. So it comes down through here, and there's a significant break with the muzzle. All right, this is this incorporates the perspective and the gesture of, the, of this forward-leaning pose. When we look at the level frontal pose, the facial angle is more or less perpendicular. In the profile view, however, the facial angle is from the mental protuberance of the chin through the middle of the pyramidal nasi and forehead decidedly convex. Our subject's gesture has a forward tilt that invokes a perspectral volume, particularly in the muzzle, that significantly contributes to the three-dimensional plastic form. Getting this convex facial angle correctly is critical. Our initial primary plumb line is an asset here for accurately gauging this convex angle.